Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Monday. It's March 31st. Um, I ended up taking a long weekend, so I was a little late or getting in today. Um, we didn't get in until late last night, so I couldn't get up and get to the office by 7 this morning. Um, shame to say, but um, so I was a little late getting here, so I traded a little late today. Um, I saw this a couple of different, early on I was looking at this channel right here and then we had the break and then moved to a new high and then we just kind of went into a, what I'd call almost a trading range. And the whole day kind of has a trading range look and feel. I say the whole day, but really from about nine o'clock or so, uh, you can see we're easily on both sides of the EMA. Uh, prior to that, it was a channel. There was a gap here. We gapped open and, uh, and then prices, um, had just kind of a slight upward bias today. And there's a bigger channel here with a median line in it. And if you saw that, um, made it a little bit easier. If you didn't see that, it could be a little confusing. But if you drew your short, shorter term trend lines like this one and this one, then you kind of had a better feel for what was going on. And uh, this stuff just comes down to experience. But if you don't have a lot of experience with this, uh, you just about had to assume this was a trading range day and you can get your lines. Um, there's definitely a clear upper piece to this and you can see it's probably right across there. I, I'd really call it almost right there. We kind of broke above a couple of times, but it's not so clear on the bottom, but that's because we had kind of an upward bias to it. So, um, you know, it just kind of moved around as the day went on. Uh, so it was a little bit harder to find. So, uh, but in the end, I think there's a bigger channel here. And I think there were some short term trends and, and so forth that uh, kept things going. And, uh, and on this one, I don't have the line here. But there was a little trend line working right up through here. Might have it just a tad steep, but something like that right there. And we had a well, we had the break, and and we also had another break here, an attempt to get a new high. But I really think the break was here, and then we moved up here. But this move up was also the retest off of this channel. Notice this is the break, and then that was the retest. So you could have seen it several different ways, uh, but that's why I like to draw these short-term trend channels and trend lines to just to make sure. That you're, you know, you're keeping, you're keeping on, you know, you're staying on the right side of the price action because otherwise here you're looking for a move to a new high, so you could have gotten fooled here, uh, but then you had to be thinking, hey, we got this channel working down, we don't have the break and the re retest with a new low. You don't figure you're gonna get a move this big, but what it is, there's just a bigger channel. And we just came off the high side, and uh, so, but. You know, if you didn't draw this early trend line right off these first couple of swings here, uh, you may not have found that. And uh, so I, you know, I drew the one off these swings and the one off these swings. And so when we bounced here, I was kind of ready for them. This really confirmed it. And then from here on, uh, you know, it was pretty obvious. And you know, of course, it's too late in the day to take these. These were the only ones that wouldn't have worked uh, bouncing off this line. And, but eventually, all trend lines give way. But you can see there's not a really good setup in here. This is more like congestion. So uh, it's the first entry and then your second entry. By that time, you just got none but a bunch of dojis. So that would have been another reason to kind of skip that trade, you know, skip this trade right here. But, uh, but you had to be aware there's a gap here too. And usually, you know, prices will try to fill that gap early on. And that may be why we really couldn't get anything going to the upside. Uh, too many people are a little bit leery of this gap. Uh, we did not fill it today, so we'll see if they try to fill it tomorrow. But uh, generally, they'll fill it in the first, uh, you know, the first, it's kind of a rule of threes, you know, is what I've always uh, understood. And it seems to hold true. The first three hours, then not after three hours, then three days, and not after three days, three weeks, and three months. And it's very rarely that they don't get filled. Sometimes it, you know, they don't. The market's too strong and it continues on and it's a long time later before the gap gets filled. Uh, but generally they get filled pretty quick. So, uh, but let's talk about the trades. Uh, again, I didn't get here at 7 o'clock. Uh, these are just kind of after the fact. Uh, uh, 
but this one's pretty obvious here. You got, you got a, you got your where the market opened, and you tested it once, you tested it twice. It's kind of a trading range. You're expecting prices to come back up here to the upper side. Um, you get a little. You, prices actually broke lower first, and it fails and goes out the high side. You know, you probably put a stop right there. If you tried to use anything other than a stop above that bar, you didn't get filled. And it looks like it moved really quickly, and then boom. And uh, and one thing you you got to that you want to look at too is is that this is leg one here. Even though there's a gap, that's still a leg up. And so you're looking for a target, and you can see we we pretty much reached that to the tick, and then have, before we had a correction and tried to go a little higher. So um, I like this one because. You got a new low here, slower than that one, and you're coming up. First entry, uh, pullback, second entry short. You got two legs up, second entry short, it fails. Um, I went back and forth about whether or not to make this one green, but I think this is pretty obvious. The market's moving pretty quickly here. Uh, easy scalp, and, uh, and then, of course, then we get the correction. Uh, there's a first entry, pullback, second entry. There's a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of congestion here. Notice the market comes down. You got a first entry short pullback, and you try. To, that's a really bearish looking bar, and it breaks lower, and uh, and you're climbing off that trend line right there. So you figure you're probably going to make another leg up. So I like that second entry. Uh, this is one I'd probably use a limit order to try to get a little bit of a better entry. Uh, then you come back. You get a first entry. The bar is really big for a first entry. Wait on see if you get a second entry. You get it right there. Another easy scalp. And um, there's a second entry long right here, but you got, notice how this didn't go very much further than this one. And then you get this big bullish bar and it doesn't go very far. And then you get your second entry. It's right, you know, it actually is right above this little doji. And so you really got a bunch of overlap. It's real close to the high. Um, if you got caught right there, it gave you a chance to get out without much, too much damage. Uh, but when this thing broke higher and immediately turned down, you just about got to exit right there. Or, you know, it came actually came back again and gave you a chance to get out at uh, maybe break even or maybe a tick or something. Uh, but you're looking for it to make a new high, so it's it's possible it's possible you could get caught on that second entry. I don't know how that looked on everybody else's chart, but uh, it's not a very good setup when you get two doges in a row like that. And you're so close to a high that barely went higher than the last high. Um, it's not a good sign. And uh, the fact that this didn't get back to the highs before it went lower as well. Um, and so what you got to figure is you're probably going to get another leg down. So just draw that trend line. You can see there it comes right off those first couple of swings. And we didn't get a break till here. Then there's the move to a new low. And then you started higher. You don't know that it's going to shoot all the way back down here. But uh, you at least want to see a attempt for a retest. And that would be the only re... Maybe other than the two dojis. Uh, that would be the only thing that keeps you from uh, going long right there. Uh, and people ask me that all the time. And, and even if you... You might have drawn this a little different at first uh, because I had it a little steeper at first too. I had it like that and like that. But you can still see that we don't have a break yet. We don't get the break till here. So you get the same. You come. You turn out the same way no matter how you draw that. Uh, so uh, in the end, I thought this one looked better. And that's why I left it because you can see it holding here and here and down here. Um, so in the end, I thought that looked better originally. I had it drawn down through there as well. Uh, but either way, it still kept you on the right side if you waited on the first break. And then you got to you got to have a show of bullishness with a break of that trend, little trend line or whatever, and then uh, an attempt to go to a new low. Uh, even though we were looking for a new high, you got to wait for the correction to be over. And people ask me that all the time. How do you know when the correction's over? Well, you have to draw your trend line in the other direction, and you have to wait on it to be over. Uh, um, but anyway, you get two legs down, and then you finally get a break here. And um, so, again, you get a second entry. You get a first pullback and then a second entry long. 
That actually would have worked, but I wouldn't have taken that one because you don't have a break yet. I think it would have worked. 64.75. Yeah, you see, you would have got your you would have got your scalp there, but I just think it's too risky. And then you definitely don't want to go long above that bar, so you got to wait on a better setup than that. And then you get a. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a failed second entry short, but then again, look, it's just a lot of little dojis. It's not a very pretty bar. Uh, there's no reason to go long yet. You got a double top right there. Um, you don't you don't necessarily want to go short there, but you don't want to go long either. But then you get the failed second entry long, and now you got everybody trapped, and you're looking for a move to a new you know to retest the low. So I like that one. It's a little bit aggressive. Most people would be better off just staying out of that. Uh, but if you understood what was going on here and you knew prices were probably at least coming to test the slow uh, or back to the median line, if you saw that, uh, then, uh, then you know, it's probably okay to take that. And it looked like it was going to bounce off the median line. You see it hit and then turn back down. Um, and then, of course, this comes down and bounces right off that trend line. And now you've really got two legs down and two legs in the middle and then another or this is one leg. There's two legs in there, but there's a leg down, a little two-legged correction, and another leg down. It bounces right off that line. Aggressive trader after that break and this new low and that little bounce right there. It's a little aggressive, but, you know, aggressive traders are going to take it. And then right here, I never grabbed the right one. is still giving me trouble so I've got a new mouse coming but I uh, haven't gotten it yet so uh, but notice this you get a second entry long off the lows here but then uh, it's not a very good setup so just wait and then you get the little trap you get the notice this new low first entry short pull back second entry short uh, nice chance to go long and I'm get, and I'm guessing there's probably some people that got failed that got fooled on the second entry short there but you got to know where these lines are possibly at, and you got to know that you can't go short uh, out of all that mumbo jumbo there. Uh, but at the very least, just skip that trade and wait until you get something confirmed in the other direction. And uh, but there's a second entry long there after a failed second entry short, new high pullback first entry pullback second entry. And uh, so I like that for a long. It's right off this trend line. If you saw that trend line, because you really got it confirmed here. You got another touch here, then another touch here, and then a third touch. So this is acting as support. And if you saw that, you got to go long right there. And then you get, this is just a little breakout. This is kind of a, a con, uh, congestion area. Notice all the stacked up bars and all. So you may have missed that one because of that, but then you get a little pullback there and a chance to go long above that. It's just a little breakout pullback long, and it gets back inside that channel, and you can see it's holding prices on both sides really nicely. We just had a break early here, and really what it was is, you know, people just weren't convinced. A lot of people may not have seen this early, um, but then... You don't want to take the first. Now you got a break and a new high, but more than that, you got a break of this channel and a new high. And so you're thinking, hey, we're probably going to make, I was thinking we might make another leg down like this. Uh, I wasn't really sure, but that's what I was, you know, I was going to get a measured leg here. And you might have even been looking for a measured leg similar to this to the upside, but when we couldn't, we made that new high, and we already had the break of this channel. You got to be thinking, hey, we got to we got to have another correction here. Um, and there was also the fact there's a lot of different reasons to take this one. If you had your line draw it across here, it was a failed break higher from the last couple of. That was the main reason I kind of like this one because it, this is looking like a trading range day and you've got all those matching highs across there. We broke higher, we pulled back, we tried to go higher again. So you get a second entry short right there uh, and that's the reason I like that one. Plus it was the new high after the break of this and um, on the shorter term correction here, there was a break and a new high as well. So a couple of different reasons to like that one to the short side. And uh, 
you don't you know you don't know that it's going to run all the way down you figure it's at least coming back to the ema and probably coming back to test this breakout area right across here notice there's kind of a little bit of a breakout area right there too and uh, this was support previously and uh, it kind of acted as resistance so you figure they're going to come back and try to test it again so i was looking for prices to come at least in here but they came all the way back to the line again um this is a second entry long it's really a there's really a second entry long here but that, that was just to kind of fill that gap notice that pull back first entry pull back there was a little tick higher there but um i still looked at it there's like two legs in the second leg here um i like that it, the main thing is it's bouncing off this trend line and you get a little inside bar that's green and you figure you're coming back to the EMA, maybe back to make a new high here. And um, that's pretty much what happens. And you get a second entry long here. Everything got back above the EMA. It pulls back. Uh, easy scalp. And then, it, then you get a failed second entry short. Uh, I went back and forth whether or not to make that one green as well. Uh, because there's just so much congestion there. You've got this high. But notice we got through it. So it's kind of like a breakout pullback. But notice that new low, and then we came back and tested it once, and we came back and tested it again. And um, so I really like that. It's a failed second entry short for the most part. It's a trap, and we weren't back up to these highs yet. And uh, so I like that one because of the trap mostly. And that was all I marked. And that was getting really late into the day. Uh, I traded a little later, so I marked my chart a little bit later than normal. And that's what I saw today, and um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot more time today. I need to catch up from being out of the office on Friday, and um, I didn't have time to do any demonstration trades or anything today either because I was trading for myself since I came in late. And um, since I didn't work Friday, um, I'm trying to catch up a little bit too. So, but that's what I saw today. Um, if you didn't see that, they, they, well, we had some, a few comments on that. Uh, uh, were interesting. Uh, I think they were either on Friday or over the weekend. But uh, I commented. I didn't take, you know, I think the trader thought that I took their comment the wrong way, which I didn't. It just gave a good opportunity to explain this is that this is not as easy. Even though it looks real easy, it is easy once you have the experience and you really understand price action. But it's not as easy as it looks until you get the experience. You can't just learn the rules and understand the rules and expect to be able to do this tomorrow. It's, it's just like in the comment I made, it's like trying to be a fly jet fighter. You know, you can go through ground school and probably make an A, but it doesn't mean you can step in the plane and fly it the next day. You have to get in the simulator and you have to get practice. First, you got to learn to get it airborne and, and the controls and all the different things it'll do. And then you have to learn to, to land it and take off. And and uh, and all the time you're doing this, there's somebody else trying to shoot you down, which is the other traders that are trying to take your money. So it's very similar to that. And so you're not only trying to fly the learn to fly the plane, you're trying to learn to fly it while somebody that already knows how to fly it is trying to shoot you out of the sky or take your money. Uh, so it, it's a good illustration, I think. And hopefully that makes it more understandable to people of how difficult this is because you're not only learning you're going up against the be best traders in the world that do this for a living and you're also uh, going up against people that you know a lot of uh, uh, hedge funds and uh, other uh, commercial type trading entities that have pockets that are so deep you can't imagine and they can afford to be wrong, and you can't afford to be wrong. That's why we keep very tight stops, because we can't afford to be wrong. We've either got to be right, or we got to get out. And, uh, and we don't have to be right for very long. we just got to be right for five or six ticks in order to get our four ticks out of it. And that makes it a whole lot easier than trying to catch a trend. And um, because occasionally people will send me... Um, their chart and they'll say why did this trade not work and just to say this one is example but it did work but I, it worked based on our rules because all we're looking for is a scalp but they're trying to catch it for a longer trend and, and they hang on and it comes back and stops them out and then they wonder why it didn't work well it did work for based on the way we're trying to do this all of these worked 
every trade I've marked on here worked if you are just trying to scalp out four ticks. Some of them get a whole lot more than that, but when we're taking a trade, all we're looking for for the most part, if we're entering on a stop, is a six tick move. If the first tick executes your order on your stop entry, then you move four ticks, and generally it has to move that fifth tick or one more tick through to fill your order. So that takes a total of six ticks to get four, uh, to, to walk away with four ticks of profit. Uh, occasionally you can get lucky and you can get a lemon order and you get in a little better entry and you maybe only need four ticks of movement or five ticks of movement, uh, depending on how good your lemon order. But I only recommend using lemon orders on iffy trades or not so good setups because a lot of times if you try to enter on a lemon order, you get left behind on the best trades. Right here, if you tried to use a limit order, you got left behind. And you, you never got a chance to enter with a limit order. And that happens quite often. Uh, down here, you probably didn't get a chance to enter on a, If you waited on this really bullish bar, you didn't get a chance probably to enter on a limit order. Um, the best moves, you just do not get, a, you know, you're going to get left behind. So unless there's a good reason to use a limit order, just... Enter following the rules on a stop entry, and you'll be a lot better off. So, uh, But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up for today, and uh, we'll be back to do it tomorrow. Uh, this is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.